All right, guys. So these next three, well, at least the first one definitely should be pretty quick. I'm hoping to give these three <clears throat> in this one video. But so in this video, we're going to be talking about HTML block and inline elements. And so that's where I am. It's um, in W3 schools. It's right below HTML block and inline. So with this one, um, as I said before, um, every HTML element um, pretty much is an element and has a value, right? So there are two ways that the that HTML uh, displays those values, either block or inline, okay? We talk a lot about inline, we talk a lot about block, but a block level element always starts on a new line and takes up the entire width of um, the browser, right? So it's gonna stretch out from left to right as far as your browser goes. Um, so some block line elements that are new to us that we're going to talk about is div. Now, we did talk about div before. I told you that div pretty much stands for division, and it's ways that you can divide up your website. Um, so if I do a div, pretty much it's just going to be something that divides out the website. So if I, let's say, um, well, actually, all of these, um, that we created that you saw in different sections with article and stuff like that. These used to be divs, um, but now they are um, recognized as their name, so they no longer have to be divs. And as I explained to you in videos back, you would have a whole bunch of closing div tags because no matter what you set, what class you set that div for, it's always going to end in div because the tag itself is a div. Um, I know that's a lot. Hopefully that makes sense, but there's a reason I wanted these broken up a little bit more um, to go into just a little bit of detail. So div stands for division, just know that, and it's a way to divide up your website. However, HTML has since created some tags that the browser understands so that we don't have to use so many divs or get divitis, okay? Um, some of the, um, let me go ahead and put this over here just so that you can see where we are. Um, some of the block level divs or block level elements, which means remember it expands the entire width. It is its own box, um, or block uh, on your site. So these are some of the ones that, um, are block level elements. For instance, figure, which we'll go into much later, paragraphs, which we already know. So you put a paragraph in there, everything else goes to the next line. The paragraph gets um, its area on its own. Um, article, which we'll talk about later, footer, things like that. So just know that um, pretty much that's all you need to know for the, the um, I mean, you'll want to know all of these because you'll want to use them. Now we've used uh, main and we're using tonight and stuff like that. So inline element um, doesn't start on a new line. It's just pretty much in line with um, whatever element that you put it in, um, and it only takes up as much width um, as needed. So a span, which is like a div, but it's an empty, well, it's like a div, but with spans, it doesn't take up the whole line. It's pretty much just sits inside of whatever inline element you put it on or whatever inline item you put it on. So, um, and then these are the different ones. Link, which we've done a few and you already see when we do the link, it pretty much stays on the same line. It doesn't go to another line. So that's pretty much the difference. Um, it would be the difference in a, you know, just a character or a word and how the character word only takes up the amount of space that it needs versus a return, right? When you hit return or enter, then pretty much you're going to the next line. So that's will be your block, which is your block element. And then in line stays in line with, um, that, with then the element that it's in. Hopefully that made sense and it wasn't too confusing. Usually I draw something up on a board or we have a conversation, two way conversation back and forth um, about that. So um, another thing too, I like the way that they put this. So a div element is often used as a container for other HTML elements. Um, a way that I like to explain this to classes is if you go to the grocery store and you buy say 30 items, right? And all of those 
items are individual. So you can either take all 30 items out to your car um, without a bag, right? You're just taking all 30 items out to your car. You may have to come back several times. So no bag, no cart. You're just taking them out. Or you get the bag, right? And the bag is your div. And you put them all in that bag and it makes it easier. And you can get them all in the one bag versus coming back and grabbing more, taking a little, coming back and grabbing more. So the div is your container, right? That you can put everything in um, and carry it out as once. So when it comes to styling, you can put everything in that div and you can style that div. So it's pretty cool. Um, but a div by itself without any attributes or anything, um, it's just a div, okay? Um, and that means that it's just a box, not style or anything, but you can add the style, class, and ID attributes. And those are very common attributes that are used with it. Um, when used together, um, you can style blocks of content, which is awesome. And that's what I was saying with that bag. When you put it all in the bag, you can do a lot of things to every all the contents in that bag at once. Um, okay, so um, we are going to set a div around our um, um, our whole document to make a wrapper. So we're going to put like our whole website into a wrapper. Um, before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about spam. Span. Um, the span element, again, is inline, and you can mark up just a part or a piece of your text. You can mark up a word if you want and then style that however you want. Um, same as a div. Um, it doesn't ha require um, attributes, but you add like class and style and ID to it, and it does a whole bunch of pretty cool stuff. Um, and when used together, it can style parts um, of your text. So I'm going to move this back over here. Um, all right, and we will go up here. And this is what I was saying. We're going to add a div around our whole, um, everything inside of body. So to do that, right before header, I'm going to hit return so that I can put div. So I'm going to put div. And then this is a div by itself. A div by itself is just a div. So I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the closing div because I want to put it, I want to wrap this div all around this entire, um, this entire, uh, uh, everything inside a body, okay? And so now I put it all, I put everything in here inside of that brown paper bag so that I can carry it all to the car at once, which is kind of cool. All right, so what I'm going to do is I like to comment my divs. Remember I talked about the comments, so I'm going to go ahead and add a comment. And then I'm going to say this is wrapper. So now whenever I see this div, I'll know that this div is wrapper because I commented it out. Say, hey, this is wrapper. Oops. Okay. I made it control S. Okay. So now all of this, my entire site is wrapped up in a div. Okay. And if I want to go a little further and I want to say, okay, well, now I want to style this div, right? I can go ahead into, well, I'll save it and just show you. Nothing really happens that you're going to see because we haven't really added anything but a box or paper bag um, around all of our information. But you will see stuff very soon, my friends. You will see stuff. So what I'm going to do is open this div tag. And now I'm going to set a style. So style attribute, right? See what I mean by once you know it's attribute, it's super easy because now you know, oh, attribute is style equals quote, quote. So once you know the format of it, it makes it super easy for you to start styling. So I'm going to say background. Color. Maybe I want something like sky blue. I don't know. Let's try it. I don't even know if, uh, oops, background color, sky blue. 
Let's see what that looks like. Okay, oh, look at that, look at that. Would you look at that? There it is. The background color of a sky blue, right? And it's around the wrapper. And this is really how you can see that it is wrapping around because once it responds to whatever uh, style you set, it is working, which is awesome. So it's seeing that, I'm gonna move this over. So now I know that I have a working style and now I can style away. So a way to style this, um, uh, if you want to add multiple ones, all you do is right after your semicolon, hit the space bar, and then like I can say, uh, I can change the color of my text to maybe dark blue. Is that a thing? That is a thing. Okay. Um, semicolon, I can change, give it some padding of... Let's try 10 pixels from the edge. Let's look at it. All right, so this is where we are. So I gave it 10 pixels of padding. I do want more. Um, so remember, so I'm putting this style on <clears throat> the div, right? On the div tag. Um, and so I haven't made this, I haven't given this the name wrapper yet. But I'm putting this style on the div tag itself. Um, I'm going to change this to 25. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so change it to 25. Gave it some padding on the left and the right and the bottom. And now there's breathing room, which let me tell you guys, I love breathing room. Not too much. However, I one of my things I do not like is seeing stuff on the edge. Now, all of your past websites, that's fine. That's fine. If you have stuff that's going to the edge because you didn't know. But now you know you're armed with padding. So make sure you lift your um, text and information off of that edge. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So I can add more things to it. Let's say I wanted to change the font and stuff like that. You guys already know how to do that. So you can do that. So if I wanted to, and we'll get to that when we get to, I'm not going to change it to wrapper until we get to ID and classes. Um, so with span though, just so you know, let's say um, I wanted to highlight the fact that um, I need something with words. Hang on. Let me see. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go get some some words. Let me go get some cupcake Ipsum. Uh, yep. I'm gonna say two paragraphs. Yeah, give it text and love. Yeah, I generate that. Let me copy this. All right, so. Um, down here in another section, maybe an article. I'm gonna open article. And in here, I'm gonna make this a P tag because I know that it's two paragraphs and we already know what happens if we don't. We saw that last week. Um, I'm gonna give this one down here. A P tag. Put this tab in. One more time. Okay. So I'm going to save that. There we go. All right. So this is what it looks like with just my text in here. But let's say there are certain parts that I want to do. I want to make a different color or something like that. So what I'm going to do is go to my, let me close Cupcake Ipsum. And let me see. I'm going to. Maybe cheesecake marzipan. I want something cool around that. So first, I'm going to give it a span, um, the span tag. And so anything inside the span is going to be affected. So I'm going to move it after the word marzipan. So now this means that cheesecake and marzipan are going to both be affected. Now, if we look at it now, we're not going to see any changes because we haven't really told it to do anything. Okay. All right. But we're going to. 
All right, so inside of our span, now this, again, this is our inline style because inline style is happening in line. Our embedded style is happening inside of style tags that are inside of the head tag, okay? And then the difference is this is going to affect just this text only, nothing else, whereas the styles that are in here, it, it affected every header, every table header, every table data, um, that was um, that we have on the page. So that's the difference in the two. This is very specific and only affects the it, what it's in line to. All right, so um, let's see. I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to go to span. I'm going to go to style. Go ahead and put out our um, style. Uh, oh, attribute, goodness. Equals, quote, quote. All right, so inside of here is where I need to add some um, CSS, which like I said, we haven't gone through yet. So if you don't fully understand it, it's fine. Um, but for now, we're just going to go ahead and add it. And we did talk about it last week. So if you look at last week's um, video, um, a little more thorough, we talked about it a little bit. But we're going to get really in-depth with this, which is cool. CSS, I love it so much. Um, I, like I said, I used to hate the web. Um, but I love it now. So, um, okay. So I'm going to go with a color. Um, I don't want to make it red. Cause red is really going to hurt our eyes. I'm going to say green. But I'm going to say forest green. No, dark green. Dark green. All right. So we're going to change our color to maybe make this um, dark green. Um, some color, and then maybe we'll change... Could do the font weight bold. Yeah, I'll do the font weight. Same one they use. So font weight, we'll say bold. All right, save that. Oh, I should have changed the size. That's okay. And now we'll see that cheesecake marzipan is indeed that green that we told it to be. I might make it red. I wasn't going to do red because I thought red would look weird, but this actually not so bad. Dark red. Save that. Okay. All right. So now it's easier to see. So that cheesecake more of the pan is larger. So we we set a style to change that span of text. That's one way to look at it. It's only affecting that span of text that we have in between this span element. Hopefully that made sense. Um, if not, like I said, I can do a Zoom session with any of you guys who are, you know, confused um, at all. So I'm going to say um, font size. And I'm going to say 200% just because, you know, I'm living on the edge. And I just wanted to see some craziness. And I want to show you how crazy you can get. Okay. So there it is at 200%. So you can definitely see it now. So there's some really, really cool stuff you can do to it. I always tell you guys to play because playing is fun when it works, right? All right. So that's what I want to go over with you in the for the span. Um, I was going to try to sneak in classes and IDs. I think I can see an ID. Okay. So there's between classes and IDs. Classes and IDs are both attributes, right? So we're going to talk about um, uh, classes first. So what a class does is a class will allow you to affect multiple things on your page, right, that have the same class attribute. Um, One of the things that can be used with is JavaScript. We're not really going to go into JavaScript, so I don't really want to um, bring that up. But um, just know that it, in JavaScript, it'll help you call out to like whatever items um, you want to specifically target. You don't have to know that. I just want since I since they bring it up, I wanted to um, make sure I elaborate on it a little bit. Um, so that's pretty much what a class does. And now a class and an ID pretty much do the same thing. Um, and so often the question I get from students is, well, then what's the difference? Why use one for the other? So 
with IDs and classes. So a class and ID, I kind of look at them as, so an ID in your family, or even in my family, I am the only Andrea. That is my ID, right? I'm the only Andrea. So I'm used one time. So if I was a web ID, I would be used one time um, only. So for instance, we are going to play with the ID of rapper, right? It can be used one time. So this is really just like um, and then the class, though, I'm a class of bats, Latins, like, or bats. There are a lot of us, right? There are a lot of us sitting in a class. Um, so it's kind of like those boxes. So going back to our moving company, um, they stack these boxes. So if all of the boxes are the same size, um, the same color, the same um pretty much um, features everything, then how do you know the difference between one box to another? Well, the way, that, how do you know what goes in the bathroom? How do you know what goes in the living room? How do you know what goes in the kitchen, right? What do you guys do to make sure you know the difference? And I'm sure you said you label them. That's exactly what classes and ID does is it's labeling them. So if I have 12 boxes that are going to go to the bathroom. I'm going to label those 12 boxes bathroom. If I have eight boxes going into the kitchen, I'm going to label all eight boxes kitchen. If I have one box that goes into, um, say, uh, the parlor, say I have a, a, a little parlor in the house or whatever, then that one box is unique and that one box can have an ID label because it's only one parlor in the house. There's only one box um, for that parlor. Boom, that's where it's going. That's gonna be my ID. That's a very unique box. And it's used one time, one place in the house, one time on the page, parlor, okay? But my classes, are gonna be all of those boxes that share the same attributes or similar attributes um, that go to the bathroom or that go to the kitchen. So that's a class, okay? Like a class of fish, more than one fish, right? Are in that class of fish. So you can style multiple things. So if you had um, in your website um, um, an area that you're gonna affect multiple areas with the same features or the same attributes. You want them all to be 400 by 200. You want them all to be blue. You want them all to have a certain Helvetica font. You want all of them, instead of having to go individually and style this one and that one and that one, you can style a whole class of them and affect all of them at once <clears throat> versus an ID like the wrapper where you're going to have one wrapper or one container for your whole website on that page, that's gonna get a unique ID. So hopefully that helps with, it's just really labeling. Um, it's a way to label your divs. So it's not, so you don't get the divitis, div, 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 div. Um, and then you can read the W3 <coughs> um, school's uh, explanation on it. They, they give a good one as well, but um, it really is um, dividing stuff out. It's kind of cool. So. That's really the difference in classes and IDs. There are rules with IDs where um, you cannot have more than one element with the same ID, which is what I was talking about because it's unique. So you would have one wrapper to the page. Um, the ID specifies a unique ID for that element. Uh, the ID attribute is used to point to a specific declaration in the style sheet. So we're gonna be targeting wrapper. The ID is gonna target wrapper. Um, oh, yeah, 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 super important. So the syntax, when you call an ID <clears throat> in CSS, so when you call an ID to your style, you have to have that hashtag, right? So its symbol in CSS is a hashtag. It doesn't make sense yet, but it will. The symbol for a class is a period. So when you're calling a class <clears throat> in, in um, CSS, it's a period. The way I look at that, you have classes, right? But a class is divided in first period, second period, third period, fourth period, right? So classes, period, 
IDs hashtag, right? So um, that's one of the ways that I, t- I try to remember um, which is which and what has ever what has always helped me. I would try to find some type of association associated with. Um, and make sure there's nothing else I'm missing. And then the W3 school says the difference between classes and IDs is a class name can be used by multiple HTML elements, um, while an ID can only be used once by one HTML element per page, <clears throat> um, which is what I went over. Uh, let's see. You can also have HTML bookmarks with IDs and links, um, and we'll be going over that later where you can jump around. Let's say you have a one page website and it's super long. You can have like a menu and jump around um, each part of the website by just like a different type of nav bar, um, which will take you to the top or the bottom, stuff like that. Um, And that's pretty much classes and IDs. And make sure I went over everything with classes um, and I don't leave anything out. Nope. And then there's a syntax, which we'll go into um, in a moment. So if I go here and I go to um, the top where I have the wrapper, so let me go back. So I have the div, remember the style equals um, and that information. Let me make this a wrapper. Well, let me make it a div ID, give it the ID attribute. Oops. Right, so it's an attribute, so quote, quote. Let me space that out. And then I'm gonna call this rapper. He's a DJ, I'm the rapper, okay. And so now I have rapper. So now I've given this an ID, okay. Um, so now I can call on this ID, right? So I can go up here to the top where I have style and I'm gonna hit return. And I'm gonna give it a hashtag and type wrapper because so remember when we call it in CSS, it has to have that hashtag of wrapper. So now I can start styling this. I can say um, color for text, right? I can say white. I can say um, <clears throat> what else will happen? I can. Um, I can give it, uh, let me look at CSS. I can give it some padding, but it already has padding. So I don't want to um, cross that. I'm trying to think of other stuff to give it so that I don't, I can give it, um, what else? Uh, maybe a background. Mm. Let's see. Well, what's happening is, oh, I got to spell stuff correctly. But what's also happening is, so anytime you do stuff and it's not affecting it, this is where we have to troubleshoot to see what it is that I did wrong. And I did something wrong because it's not changing. Um, like it's supposed to. So let me see. Oh, I bet this is the reason. Let me see something real quick. So now I'm playing trial and error. That was the reason. Okay. It's because I already have a style on here. But if I don't want this style here, I can go up here and I can start setting um, the style up here. I can say sky blue. I can say, um, uh, oh, sorry, I can say uh, that I want the color to be dark blue. I'm going to say my colon. Hang on one second. And I can put padding 25. Let's see. And then, so I have all of the styles that I had up here. 
I have them down here and I can add um, anything else. So I'm going to copy this one because I might want to use this somewhere else. I'm going to cut that. But what you will see if I save this um, and bring it over, you'll see that. So I still have the same styles because now I put those styles inside of the wrapper tag. So if I wanted to change something, uh, just so that you guys can see, maybe I want to make this navy. Mm, let's try green. Okay, this is ugly. It looks Christmassy, but I just want to show you that it'll change um, pretty much. So that's pretty much styles and I'm going to go back to sky blue though. Um, that's pretty much ID. And if I wanted to set a class, let's say for H2, I want to set the class attribute. I can make, um, and this is going to affect all H2 tags with this class. So I can say, um, I can give it a class name. I'll say, um, I don't know, fun for now. And then, um, so now anything I style, anything that has the H2 class of fun, it's going to follow these rules. So I have AC class of fun. So now I can go up here to my header and I'm going to make sure I'm that one. And we said that we style class with the period, right? So I'm going to put period fun. And then I'm going to say I want all AC tags with the class of fun to be uh, dark. red. Oops. Dark red with a D this time. Save that. And now if we go back to our browser, we'll see that the H2 tags now have that uh, style of dark red on it. All right. So that was pretty much what I wanted to go over. And so you can go further and start styling um, your other areas, you can use inline styles, but just know that um, if you do it in the head, you're affecting everything on the page that either has or follows that rule. So with, so we learned about IDs is that um, we can set our ID inside of the div. And when you're do, dealing with IDs, they have to have hashtags. You can set your classes inside of the div. And when you're dealing with classes, it has to have the um, period. And then you can add your styles to it, which is going to be that property value pairing that we talked about last week. All of these like background color, the value is, is background color is property, value is sky blue, property um, for color, and then um, the color is dark blue, you know, and so forth and so on. So that's uh, styles, that's classes, that's IDs, um, and Pretty much, let's see what else did we, oh, so we know about block, inline, we know about classes, our IDs. Um, in the next uh, video, we'll go over iframes. Um, and that should be a short one, we hope. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Like I said, if you're confused on any of this, um, we are going to have um, class. Hopefully we'll have it Wednesday. That's kind of what I'm, I'm pushing for. Um, and But if you get confused before that, just contact me and we'll do, um, and I'll jump in a, 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 a Zoom and we'll figure this out. All right. Have fun designing. Don't let it frustrate you. Just let me know. Bye.